at what stage you are going to do what this is exactly the thing we want to know as an interviewer you can basically create an object by using the default constructor you can create an object by using the single parameter you can create an object by using the two parameter what we have made them right we have created a class this part with the new is called as the object welcome to the testing academy guys so in this video we are going to discuss about the automation tester interview question and answer for three to four years of experience right so let's get started these are very important five questions that generally i also ask right so let's get started without any ado let's jump into the first question all right what can you explain the constructor overloading in java and how constructor are called within the example constructor overloading is a concept in object oriented which is in boops basically presented right where the class can have a multiple constructor with the different parameter list so this is a gist where, where we have prepared i'll tell you the simple example we have a student student class where we have a name and age which are two variables that we have if you see this is the default constructor that we have right where we have initialized the name is equal to unknown and age is equal to zero but now overloading basically means with the same name right you will have a another constructor right so same constructor with the different parameters here you will see we have three different type of parameter one is default constructor two are parameterized constructor but they are equally this has a two parameter this has one parameter this has no parameter right so this is a concept which is known as the constructor overloading so you can call by using this single you can create an instance you can basically create an object by using the default constructor you can create an object by using the single parameter you can create an object by using the two parameter this is a concept which is called as the in the oops which is object oriented programming in java specially called as constructor overloading i hope this helps this link will i will share with you right and you can go through that in this case okay question number 2 is what are the difference method or with the parameters and method without the parameters what do you mean by method with parameter and without parameter right the method without the parameters right without parameter if you see right print hello no parameters is involved method with the parameter for example string name is given which is we are using in this case right so that's what it is right similarly there's another question which is can a static methods be parameterized the answer is yes of course if you have used the method utils right we have created a static method which can be also parameterized right so side by side two questions in one we have basically given the answer i hope this helps automation is the need of the r this is a wake up call for the manual testers if you want to convert to automation job ready automation tester batch is now live four months live batch saturday sunday we are going to learn about core java api automation and web automation link is in the description do check it out all the projects are live will the 24/7 doubt sessions on sd.club check out the more details right let's move on to the question number 3 generally i ask this question which is what what do you mean by method overriding in the java right it's a new concept where a subclass provide a specific implementation for a method that's already defined in this right how to basically perform the override also in java please explain this right let's see the simple example if you see that right, we have a shape class in the shape class we have a method name draw similarly circle class extends the shape right it is a single single relationship that we have for inheritance right now we have overrided the draw we have overrided the draw so if we are creating an instance if you see we are creating an instance of circle so this will call the circle only if you remember right overridden method will be called what is the reason you have to remember like this whoever the object is created this part with the new is called as the object here we have reference of shape you can have a parents reference that is absolutely fine but whose object is created that functions will be called so draw of this one which is drawing a circle will be called that is the correct answer and that is called as overridden method overriding in java also very very important question i hope everyone understand with this example that i have given please don't get confused people ask this question lot of time question number 4 let's go over it what do you mean by encapsulation and why it is used with an example okay encapsulation basically means building combining encapsulation have you seen a capsule it has two parts right so combining your attributes and method is basically called as the encapsulation to create a class in the oops concept in java that's the most important point so the concept basically restrict the direct access to internal data of an object basically what we are doing is let me show you with a practical example okay if you see this example we have a banking a bank class if you see whatever the para, well, method attributes that we are taking right these are the attributes they are private in nature they can be only accessed by their getters and setters only way to access them is by using the getter setter that is encapsulation plus the functions that we already have like deposits and everything right what we have made them right we have created a class class combines the attributes and methods attributes are secure they can be accessed by three getters and setter this is called as concept of encapsulation why we are doing this because we don't want that deposit whenever deposit amount happens right we don't want these attributes to be accessed 
by the other classes or anything we want to hide them by using the private and the only way to access them or only way to stop them is by using the getter and setter so in this case if you see we don't have a setter for the security purpose why the security purpose because we want to make sure that nobody basically set these variables so that they can increase the deposit or withdrawal amount right that's why i hope now you understand encapsulation is combining attribute with your methods together right and only way to access the attributes are by using the getters and setters so you now you you have something in your hands in the setter part and in the getter part what you want uh, other classes to basically see in these attributes right so in this example uh, we don't want these uh, values to be added or change that's why no setters in this case okay so that was the question number four i hope you are liking it give me a like right if you are already liking this kind of interview question answer last one but not the least which is how would you test a new functionality added to a software application explain your testing approach this is a most common way here what we wanted to know is that basically what type of testing that you are going to do and do you actually know about the different type of testing which are available example is see first of all you know whenever the stlc whenever we give you a new kind of application right we are expecting that you should be aware what is unit testing unit testing is basically testing the individual units right and generally which framework generally we use we can use j unit for java pytest for python after that there will be an integration testing done mostly unit testing is done by the developers right and in integration testing is basically done by either developers or the QA team depending upon the whichever whoever is comfortable mostly it is done by the integration then followed by the functional testing where we will come and we will conduct the overall system testing and overall flows of the application right not only that we will do regression testing which is all the stable functionalities if you are added a new features right what are the stable functionality we want to basically regress and we want to check we do that followed by the UAT and the known functional testing known functional testing include performance security compatibility compatibility documentation review code review automation regression suite final sign off and everything so here we wanted to know all about what exactly will be your process so prepare a good amount of time and with the example you can take an example of an e-commerce website and you can properly give at what stage you are going to do what this is exactly the thing we want to know as an interviewer so we have given you a new functionality to test all the type of testing that you can explain with that example that would be very very good for example for e-commerce you can say that sir when there are individual visual unit we do unit testing with the j unit framework then we combine two or more module then it becomes an integration right then we basically combine all of them then we perform the functionality testing which is the system testing followed by the known functional testing involves the performance security compatibility testing and all after the qa sign offs and all we have a uats where the end users will come and they perform the uat not only that whatever the stable functionality that there we will basically try to automate them all these things you can basically mention in this case i hope this helps this five questions let me know if you need a part two we'll try to create more videos around this interview question and answers just type part two in the comment i will definitely create a part two thanks a lot for watching this year promote if you're new subscriber consider subscribing i create videos around the software testing and automation uh, if you're already existing subscriber thanks a lot for joining in i'll see you in the next video this is your host promote bye, -bye.